Hello everyone, this is Subhashish Mohanty and today my topic is mutual fund which I feel every investor should know before investing. So my video would be all about uh, the aspects of mutual funds, how mutual fund works and uh, which are the technical terms associated with this mutual fund industry and later on in a separate video I will be covering uh, how to invest in mutual funds and everything. So let's get started. So first of all, we need to know what are the types of mutual funds. So broadly, if we classify, we have two kinds of mutual funds. One is growth option and another one is dividend one. So let me talk something about growth option first. Growth option is something where the dividend is not given. Uh, I mean, uh, it is not uh, declared uh, from time to time. Rather, all these interests, bonus, gains uh, or dividend, whatever the case may be, are, uh, you know, distributed among the investors uh, in form of reinvestments. So whatever the profits or, uh, you know, the fund performance is, it is something which is not paid out rather it gets reinvested so for long term capital growth this particular uh, mutual funds are really good so it is uh, something if somebody is opting for uh, equity based mutual funds then uh, the growth uh, growth option would be quite suitable because uh, it will uh, give them an opportunity of wealth creation and uh, since no interim dividends are paid so because of that it can give them the benefit of compounding over a period of time now if somebody is uh, uh, you know looking for an investment horizon of say for an example 15 years or 20 years or so then that would uh, accumulate uh, huge wealth and by the time uh, you know he wants to take out the money it would be huge as compared to the dividend bonds now uh, furthermore the dividend option is something uh, for dividend option is uh, for those who are looking for a short term uh, investment horizon not uh, that long term so in this as the name suggests dividend is paid uh, in a prefixed manner but uh, the timing is not so certain but that depends from the asset management company and they declare dividend uh, time and again so dividend payout is something uh, uh, which is done in two manner one is simple dividend payout and the second one is uh, dividend reinvestment schemes so in this uh, simple dividend payout structure uh, what happens is uh, after a particular uh, time frame if the NAV value increases then uh, the interim dividend is declared and that is paid in cash so it gets directly credited in the account and in the second case dividend reinvestment whatever dividend comes it is declared but the same dividend is again reinvested and uh, uh, you know uh, allotted units are uh, reinvestment again I mean uh, uh, that particular amount is again uh, reinvested by allotting certain units and those units you can always sell off later on and uh, get your uh, payment back that can also be possible so these are two kinds of uh, uh, mutual fund which are broadly uh, you know uh, categorized now let's talk something about uh, asset allocation I will be again uh, going towards uh, various terms and other jargons of mutual funds so first let let us talk about the asset allocation now as the name suggests asset allocation is something uh, uh, whereas uh, you know a person needs to decide how much they should invest in various classes of assets now when I talk about some classes of assets these are uh, something like uh, pure equity funds balanced funds debt funds money market funds maybe in certain commodities etc now uh, if somebody is uh, investing and uh, taking into consideration his uh, uh, you know nature and his risk appetite the the kind of uh, age group he is in he would uh, also decide what kind of assets he is looking at and what would be the proper proportion of that particular asset so that he can reap out the best possible returns now talking about pure equity funds these are uh, riskier because it has a high uh, you know growth potential but at the same point of time even uh, there is a potential to lose all your capital what you have invested not all but uh, it might uh, be a case where uh, you can get to know that you have invested 5000 rupees and your fund value is somewhere around uh, 3000 or 2000 maybe less than what you have invested so that is what equity is but it also has a higher uh, you know capabilities of 
of uh, giving returns now balanced fund is a mixture of equity and debt where uh, you know uh, uh, some proportion is of equity as well as uh, some proportion is uh, considering of debt there are also pure debt funds which are mostly uh, you know concerned with government securities then debentures which carries a fixed interest and these are very less riskier those who want to play safe or middle aged or maybe old age people they can always go for this debt mutual funds and there are certain funds which are purely dealing with money market funds there are also liquid funds which you can use for a very short term period usually for one two days or seven days whatever the case may be there are subtle uh, etfs as well exchange traded fund where uh, you can also uh, invest there are gold funds there are other commodity funds as well which various amcs offer from time to time so these are uh, certain asset allocation now let's talk about uh, different kinds of mutual fund investments so typically i would uh, like to tell you three s of uh, mutual funds that is uh, sip systematic investment plan then stp systematic transfer plan and swp which is called as systematic withdrawal plan so uh, systematic uh, uh, investment plan is something where uh, every month say for an example 2 2000 rupees a person gets invested and uh, it uh, you know allots that particular units and uh, he continues that particular investment for a time frame of say for an example 10 years so 10 years multiplied by every month 12 months so around 120 months he is paying 2000 rupees and equivalent units are getting allotted so at the end of 10 year whatever the fund value would be he he would get that particular return now say for an example now the nav is around 10 rupees so in 1000 rupees he is getting 100 uh, units now the next month the nav rose to 11 so equivalent you know units would be given somewhere around uh, uh, say 90 units or something then uh, this process goes on and after uh, the end of 15 year he finds that his nav is around uh, 50 rupees and uh, the units which what he has accumulated is around 1000 uh, units so uh, 1000 multiplied by 50 would give you 50000 rupees of return so this is how it works so this is called a systematic investment plan now in this particular plan uh, one has an option to average out all the factors of market because sometimes the market plays a very important role and uh, sometimes you may find the nav values are quite higher sometimes it gets drastically lower because of uh, some sort of an event like corona virus or something or the other so this gives you an opportunity to average out all your costs so that you can get exponentially higher return now similarly there is another concept called systematic withdrawal plan systematic withdrawal plan is exactly the opposite of systematic investment plan where he can opt for you know withdrawing that particular amount in a particular frame of time now say for an example after 15 years of investment if he wants uh every month his account need to be credited by 3000 rupees he can give a mandate and the same 3000 rupees units would be sold and uh, the amount would be credited in his bank account so this is called a systematic withdrawal plan so in this you need not invest whatever you have invested it will periodically give you back some some money whatever you have suggested and uh, there is another concept called systematic transfer plan now in this particular plan or suppose somebody wants to do a lump sum transaction of 10 lakh rupees now 10 lakh rupees mutual fund you need to buy so instead of buying 10 lakh rupees mutual fund on a single day what you can do is you can keep that particular money and that money you can give a mandate that every month maybe 5 5000 rupees uh, uh, you know mutual fund units you need to buy because that would give you an option to play around with the market because if at all on a given day you invest the entire 10 lakh rupees on the very next day the market falls then you will have an exponentially higher uh, you know loss but if at all you follow a systematic transfer plan that money would automatically gets transferred whatever amount you have set across and that will uh, you know gets uh, invested so these are the three s of uh, mutual funds now let's uh, talk about uh, the, the 
various jargons of uh, mutual funds i know some of uh, you might uh, you know get into a confusion what is amc what is aum and all so uh, i'll try to i'll uh, try to you know tell something about it now let's talk about amc first asset management company now what exactly an asset management company is before knowing that we should know the construction of mutual fund industry uh, mutual fund industry set up by a trusty company trusty company is basically a company which has a trust of their investors now trusty company appoints an asset management company now say for an example if we talk about uh, hdfc mutual fund hdfc mutual fund is an asset management company where the trusty company is hdfc so that asset management company actually manages all the investments so this is how it works so amc stand for asset management company and this is the company that manages the fund of the individual so uh, basically this particular company puts all the money and invest all the money on behalf of their uh, investors by some trained professionals which are called as fund manager basically so your funds are being managed by dedicated fund managers which are uh, you know appointed by the asset management company and that funds get uh, invested and whatever the return accumulates that also gets distributed among the members so this is called amc or asset management company now the next possible uh, you know uh, term is net asset value or nav what exactly nav is nav is basically the unit of the mutual fund the uh, valuation of that particular mutual fund uh, so it is calculated as, as the assets of the funds minus liabilities or any such expenses whatever the case may be divided by the number of outstanding units of the fund so this is how nav is calculated now net asset value is something which decides your uh, units now suppose if for an example if you want to invest 1000 rupees in a particular mutual fund and the nav is around 10 rupee as i have already told you so you will be allotted 100 units if the nav is higher your units are lower now one thing i need to clarify here that the higher nav value or lower nav value has nothing to do with the, the return potential because there may be higher nav value but it would move exactly the way it should move so because of that even if the nav value is 43 and there is another fund which has an nav value of 10 that doesn't mean that uh, the fund having the nav value of 10 is better than 41 is absolutely not the case okay so this is what net asset value is all about uh, moving on to the next one uh, we have several uh, terms which i need to uh, tell you as i have already told you systematic investment plan sip which is a very common phenomena in mutual fund and if somebody wants to accumulate uh, you know wealth over a period of time he has to do some sort of an sip systematic investment plan and uh, having discipline is very important in this so if at all you are uh, in a disciplined manner investing every month a certain proportion of amount in some certain uh, mutual funds obviously by looking at your uh, portfolio and uh, time and again churning your money then you have an uh, potential to earn exponentially high return over a period of time uh, systematic transfer plan also we already have discussed systematic withdrawal plan also we have discussed there is another concept called nfo new fund offer it is declared by the amc from time to time there is also fixed maturity plans fmps what they call there are benchmark index also let me tell you something about benchmark index now benchmark index is something where uh, uh, it is provided to uh, uh, have a comparative outlook with the benchmark uh, you know funds now say for an example if you are investing in large cap funds so probably the benchmark would be your uh, nifty or uh, your bse index because if at all large cap uh, funds are to be evaluated so maybe nifty index or uh, you know sensex will give you the best possible results now if the sensex is growing at around 10% annually and your uh, particular mutual fund is giving you 12% return that means this particular mutual fund is doing good as compared to the market and vice versa is also the true 
truth so because of that benchmarking is important in every sector in every area there are particular benchmarking which even uh, say be uh, issues guideline from time to time now it is mandatory to disclose every aspect and uh, you have to give a benchmark standard so that people can easily compare so this is called as benchmark index now uh, asset under management AUM asset under management is something where the total invested funds are taken into consideration now AUM keeps on changing from day to day basis because uh, it uh, keeps on fluctuating so it is the total worth of that particular fund which the AMC is managing so that is called as asset under management and this is something which can give you an indication about uh, the performance of the fund and the kind of trust people have in that particular uh, fund the thumb rule is if the asset under management is huge then it has trust of the people and uh, it is better to always invest in that as compared to some new schemes or new funds where the total AUM is drastically less so because of that the funds which has higher AUM, uh, AUM values are to be preferred by the normal retail investors as compared to the ones which do not have and uh, lastly I should uh, something talk about the load aspect load is the charge basically what uh, uh, mutual fund companies charge there is typical there are typically two kinds of loads one is entry load and another one is exit load now these days after the SEBI in intervention most of the AMC don't uh, find uh, any entry load uh, they don't charge any entry load anymore most of them but there is a concept of exit load exit load is when you want to sell off your units and if you are selling it off before the expiry of a stipulated period then you are uh, bound to give certain charges which is called as exit load because when um, you are you know asking a fund manager to manage your fund he is also expecting you to stay with him for a particular period of time now if you withdraw your money before that period of time then it gets very difficult for him to manage so because of that this is a particular charge levied for you uh, that is called as exit load for uh, certain investments like uh, for ELSS equity linked uh, savings schemes uh, for that uh, the basic lock-in period is three year now before three year if you want to uh, take out all your money then you have to give some exit load there are certain other funds also say for an example uh, some blue chip company uh, some blue chip funds also charge exit load uh, for one month there are certain funds which charge you exit load for six months and all so it is always advisable to read the offer document carefully before investing so as for the Amphi also Amphi uh, websites and all these advertisements what they do they also tell the same thing that uh, mutual funds are subject to market risk please read the offer document carefully before investing so thank you very much for uh, uh, you know staying with me and uh, knowing all these facts of a mutual fund if you find my video informative please like the video and please subscribe to my channel thank you very much hope to see you in my next video